Hey, and welcome back to the channel. I just recorded the entire thing and forgot to turn on the blue light back there. And I had another light up here on my left hand side, but the light coming from the window is just so much nicer. So we're reshooting the whole thing. All right, here we go. So I ran an Instagram Q and A the other day, and we're just gonna go through some of the questions and answer as much as humanly possible. What's my favorite content to shoot? Uh, now that I've already done this once, this is, formulating an answer is going to be so much easier. <laughs> My favorite content to shoot is the kind of scenarios or scenes where you have the ability to make a photo, not take a photo. Taking a photo for me is just simply capturing the scene as you see it in front of you. Whereas now that I've started working more with portraits, off camera flash, and more like studio productions or music videos, those kind of scenarios where you make the image, I find much more rewarding because you have greater control and you can physically create the look that you're, you're wanting or the look that you're after. And the gratification you get from sculpting an image rather than just capturing an image, I find is really rewarding. Must see spots in New South Wales. Uh, if you're a tourist, just hit the classics. Um, <laughs> So places like the Blue Mountains, Bombo, Cathedral Rocks, Ebor Falls, Minamara. I've seen a lot of these and they're generally along the coast. I haven't really been that far inland, but one spot that is on my list is uh, Mungo National Park. The rock formations and the sand formations there look absolutely incredible. And it's like top of my list for astrophotography. So I do really want to go there one day. What are your travel essentials? You can't take your whole bag. So I know who this is from. This is from my partner, Amy, and she's trying to encourage me to pack less. Um, <laughs> my travel essentials would be, if you are packing really, really light, it would be a standard zoom lens, like a 24 to 70, and I'd probably take the Alpha One, just because it does great photo and video, and the files are 50 megapixels, which is plenty, meaning that if you don't quite have the focal length you're after, or you don't quite get the composition you want, you can always crop the image later. What do you do to combat burnout? And what is your biggest inspiration for creativity? To combat burnout, uh, I'm really focusing this year on being a bit less of a yes man. I have a tendency to overbook myself or just say yes to every project because I'm trying to hit like a certain goal financially. Um, but coming into 2024, I wanna be a lot better with this and really focus on saying yes to the projects that really resonate with me as a creative. And what's my biggest inspiration for creativity? I would say Instagram, honestly. Like Instagram is overloaded with a lot of really classic cliched images or the same kind of aesthetics that are just modeled and replicated and basically memed. I remember when I was at university, we learned the, the, like the, the origin of the word meme and it comes from memetics. And memetics was a idea in literature or sociology that if someone has a concept, and then someone replicates it, but then alters it in reference to the original idea, much in the same way that genetics mutate. Instead of genetics, it became memetics. Memetics became meme. And that's, that's how you know what a meme is. <laughs> now you know. Um, so even though Instagram is a really powerful tool for, for learning, I think sometimes it is a bit overloading, but I do use Instagram a lot because there are some insanely talented people there and you can draw from their images or their work and be like, hey, I really like using this type of element in the foreground, or they show you how to set up a light in a really specific way to create a unique look. Then obviously you're gonna save that and try and replicate that in your own work. Outside of creating, what are your hobbies to get you through a tough day slash week? Uh, I have none, this is pretty much it, no. <laughs> I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, but I used to do parkour professionally. So put a little clip on this side so you can see what I'm talking about. But that was a really big part of my life for about 14 years. And I don't really do it as much anymore. One, because of time constraints. I also have a bit of a knee issue, but that's still really important to me. And I still do it from time to time. So take a look. What Sony camera would you recommend for 2024? I want to upgrade from an a Alpha 6600. I would say just go straight to the Alpha 6700. It gives you access to 422 10-bit, better autofocus, uh, better flip screen, uh, newly designed body, uh, IBIS, a whole bunch of other new features. And I think 
like bang for buck wise, the 6700 really delivers because you're getting all of these new features that appear in the Alpha 7R5, but you're getting them in an APS-C camera. Whereas at that same price point, if you went for another Alpha body, like a full frame Alpha body, you'd be getting all the features from like two or three years ago. What's my dream camera setup? Um, I won't lie, I do have my eyes on the Alpha 9 Mark III. <laughs> like that, that camera is gonna be awesome. Um, so for those of you who don't know, it uses a 24 megapixel global shutter, but the benefit of that is that you can shoot strobe or flash at almost any shutter speed. So when I talked about making a photo, not taking a photo, it gives you so many options to be able to do that in bright sunlight. Goals for this year. Uh, my goal this year is to, again, be a little bit less of a yes man and focus on meeting my creative goals just as much as I meet my financial goals. Running your own business is really tough and I get very trapped into the idea that I have to hit a certain target and I need to book a certain amount of jobs and it is hard being a business owner because that, that obviously is very important to me. But this year I want to travel more, I want to work on projects that fulfill me creatively. Am I going to be doing any more wedding work this year? Absolutely, I've already got heaps of weddings booked. Uh, a lot of second shooting for other people, a few under my own brand, as well as already taking bookings for 2025, which is pretty cool. What's one thing that you feel is missing from your kit? I feel like I'm definitely missing a tele photo. So I don't own a tele at the moment. I think my longest focal length is 70 millimeters. And for what I shoot, I haven't really needed anything longer, but I do want to branch into wildlife and nature photography more. So I'm starting to look at things like 70 to 200s as well as the 200, 600. So that might be interesting in the future. My all time favorite lens, that is this bad boy, the 35 mil G Master F1.4. This lens is just absolutely beautiful. I can blow out the background and it basically lives on my camera on a wedding day. I bounce back and forth between this and the 50 1.4. Photography inspirations, or well, photography and video inspirations and why. I, the things that really inspire me are artists that have very much sculpted and created their aesthetic and they can maintain a high level of consistency with that. Obviously it's important as an artist to be diverse and I'm not saying that you should niche down too hard, but at the same time, I really like artists that have perfected their aesthetic and can deliver it with really consistent results and makes their work really identifiable. So I'm gonna uh, post some work on the right hand side here. Yeah, right hand side, but I'll just put some tags down below. That'll be in the video. Yeah, it's going great. Love you. <laughs> What's the worst piece of advice someone has given you? Niching down. So many creatives recommend to niche down, but I think being diverse and having a diverse skill set as a photographer is much more important. It allows you to work in different fields, meet other creatives, network more effectively because you're working in such a diverse range of environments. Those financial gurus on Instagram, you're the product. They are selling you the idea that if you purchase their course or their, go to their workshop or buy their whatever, that you're gonna have the same success as them. If they were truly successful, they would just be doing the thing that they're telling you to do. So ignore that. One thing you wish you did sooner in business, in creativity, in life overall. Uh, I think in business, I wish I started using Henry earlier. So although I am affiliated with Henry, I was using them for about eight months before I started doing a little bit of contract uh, production work for them. and. They handle all of my Medicare, student debt, tax, end of year tax, everything. So it's a pay as you go system, but it basically streamlines it and all just runs it through an app. So it keeps the business side of my business very streamlined. And that way I can focus on the creative side, which is the part that's like truly important to me. In creativity, I wish I learned flash earlier. So I'm fortunate enough to have worked with a few people that are insanely talented with flash and I never shot with off-camera flash or even on-camera flash for about five years. And that's a skill that I've now had to learn later on, but I wish I had invested more time earlier because again, it comes back to that thing where you can sculpt your image rather than take an image 
And that's kind of the mindset I'm really going into 2024 with, for with, which is why I just keep mentioning it constantly. What area of photo and video do I want to break into? I'd love to shoot more studio stuff. I think now that I have a better understanding of um, constant lights, but also strobe, I think I would really enjoy branching into studio as well as getting back into boudoir. I used to shoot it a few years ago and I really enjoyed it working with a client to create something that's very empowering and personal and generating a safe space where they can express themselves the way they want to be expressed and then working as their photographer to help, help capture that. I think that's a really fun and rewarding side to that style of photography. What photography or videography goals do I have this year? Other than continuing to run this business and support myself, I do want to start building towards working in more the landscape sphere, travel, wildlife, and short film or short film documentary specifically. I've shot a couple of short docos so far and my love of the outdoors and now my growing love for wildlife, I think has kind of informed that path. What's something I'd do differently if I had to start over? I think I would find a creative who's at the top of their field or someone who's insanely talented at a very specific niche, kind of latch onto them and not only draw from their success because if they're successful, they're gonna kind of pull you along the way with them. But at the same time, it's a really good learning opportunity where you can, again, diversify your skill set, learn something new, and then you can find someone else to learn the next kind of skill or the next kind of um, trend that you wanna learn about. What's one piece of advice for a new photographer? This one's a really complicated question and I feel like it's pretty loaded just because it's, it's almost too much to talk about. But when learning photography, I think about my three settings at the bottom of you know, the screen on any camera being shutter speed, aperture, ISO. I think about them in terms of creative choices and technical choices. So shutter speed and aperture can be both creative or technical, but ISO is usually a technical only choice. And the reason this is important is you always start with the creative choices and work down to the technical choices. If you're shooting portraits, your creative choice is your aperture. You wanna have a fast aperture like f1.4 or f1.8. Then you would choose your shutter speed. What shutter speed is gonna freeze my image? So I'll just set that at one over 3 25th of a second. Now I only have to move my ISO up or down to get the correct exposure because it's purely a technical choice. Conversely, if we look at landscape and I wanna blur the water as it runs through a scene, my shutter speed is gonna be my creative choice. So I can go, all right, I need a shutter speed of one second. I'll set that first, then I'll set my aperture, and then I'll only set my ISO last, simply to get the right exposure. Tips for shooting S-Log3, personal favorite. <laughs> um, there is a very mathematical way to shoot S-Log3, like exposing for 41% gray, keeping your skin tones between 55 to 65% IRE and so on. But if your camera has the ability to upload LUTs, put a LUT on there and you'll just see what your image will look like in the end. Or I try to expose between plus 1.3 to plus 1.7 and that gives me pretty consistent results. Cool, that's pretty much all the questions. I'll see you in the next one.